one of the biggest takeaways from this season for this year and beyond uh, for draft strategy, but even for start sit decisions this week, the rookie running back. This has been a case study wow. for the rookie running back in 2020. We had a loaded class, a lot of high profile names, and more than likely, you know, if you're in a championship or a semifinal matchup, you're going to have some of these names on your team, right? Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers, J.K. Dobbins, DeAndre Swift, even Clyde Edwards-Alaire, James Robinson. There's some deeper names in there too, but those are really the, the main ones. And this is why on draft day, we were saying to, to smash in all of these rookie running backs at their ADP, even some names like Keyshawn Vaughn, who didn't pan out, Zach Moss, who's been pretty disappointing season long especially relative to where you 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 drafted him maybe not because you got him late but for all these guys this is why we tell you to draft them they have the ability to take over all of the offensive production on their respective teams and we look at their profile you want running backs workhorse running backs that can be effective in all facets of the game through the air on the ground red zone do it all for their team and the profile is typically right at or under six foot over 200 pounds, 4 5 40 yard dash or faster, good college production, proven in the passing game. Get those guys any sort of snap share and they're going to produce in fantasy. And those are the running backs that we always love to invest in, right? The Saquon Barkley's of the world, Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey, Ezekiel Elliott, Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers, DeAndre Swift, and J.K. Dobbins all fit that profile to a T. And they all have great matchups this week. Jonathan Taylor has the Houston Texans, their 31st. Akers has the New York Jets, their 22nd against the running back position. Dobbins has Jacksonville, their 28th. And Swift has Tennessee, who's 27th. So wow. we're starting That's all insane. these guys this week, and hopefully they're <laughs> leading us insane. all to the promised land. Uh, but Alex, what's what's one of the you know biggest takeaways from you from this, this rookie class? Because these guys are panning out. I think 2021 is going to be really fun. Yeah, first of all, I mean, this class is historic. And you look at all the contributors at the running back position, all as rookies. It's unbelievable. You said the names. I mean, JT Akers, Dobbin Swift, CEH, James Robinson, even Zach Moss, Keyshawn Vaughn getting involved a little bit here and there. And it's, you know, I think this is a big takeaway for me here at the end of the season. This is why you play fantasy, even if you've been eliminated through the whole season, because you can learn something. You see what's going on with some of these guys, you figure out which players are emerging late and you just get reminders for the next season because this is such a reminder to just remember that running backs typically always break out in the second half of the year, unless you're a Zeke, a top five pick, unless you're a Saquon and you're getting that bell cow work from day one, it takes you time to ramp up. We saw it from Miles Sanders last season as a rookie. We saw it from Devin Singletary last year as a rookie. It happens time and time again, and this class is no different. All these names, I mean, CEH was a little bit of a special case with the hype he had going into the season, but you look at DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, Cam Akers, and even Jonathan Taylor a few weeks ago, these were all by lows. Cam Akers was picked up on waivers in a lot of places. Same for Dobbins. DeAndre Swift was getting, you know, five touches a game. And Jonathan Taylor, people started to say he was looking like Trent Richardson and they were trying to get out of the Jonathan Taylor business. So this is such a reminder. If you're going to draft rookie running backs, you have to draft a team that can get you through the first eight to 10 weeks of the season and hold those rookies on your bench, knowing they have potential to explode in the back half. And if you don't draft the rookies, it's a chance to buy low throughout the year. If, if you know, managers are giving up on certain rookies thinking, oh, this guy sucks, this guy's trash. That's the perfect time to buy low and say, hey, I'll take them off your hands or even pick them up off waivers and stash them as high upside guys. Because if you're starting, you know, those four names you just mentioned, JT against Houston, Akers against the Jets, Dobbins against Jacksonville, Swift against Tennessee, any combination of those four, and you're feeling so, so good this week, they're all top 20 plays to me. Um, and if you were able to hold on for dear life with some of these rookies or buy them low, you're probably really, really happy as you're heading into your semifinal matchup um, with some great projections and great expectations on the board. So we talked about the four studs, right? The guys who fit the profile to a T. They have smash matchups. Not really much for us to debate there or talk about. I think it'd be a pretty vanilla take for both of us. You're starting them this week. Must start for all exactly. four. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about a couple of the other guys here. Clyde Edwards-Elair. He's been 
disappointing since Le'Veon Bell's joined the team. We've talked about that snap share and the role that they're playing with each other. It really hasn't been something where Le'Veon Bell's coming in and taking over the position. It's just that the Chiefs aren't running the ball that much when, because they have Patrick Mahomes. And Clyde edwards alaire did not fit the profile of these bell cow dominant running backs like the Dalvin Cook, Saquon Barkley's. He's a little bit on the slower side from a, just a 40-yard dash perspective. Uh, he did over-index, though, in the college receiving production category, and he's on the Kansas City Chiefs, so that makes him fantasy viable. But are you starting Clyde edwards helaire versus the New Orleans Saints this week, top running defense in the NFL? I am. I know the matchup's a little scary, but CEH is one of these volume plays that you have to start each and every week. I mean, last week, 16 carries for 32 yards against Miami, not efficient at all, but he saved his day with receiving work. Five catches for 59 yards on six targets. And even in this tough matchup, it's the Chiefs offense. We know they're going to have red zone opportunities, scoring opportunities. And for a running back that's coming off a game where he's getting 16 carries and six targets, you can't sit him on your bench, even if he wasn't efficient. We've seen CEH get a lot of work all year long, other than that one mystery game when he was sick and didn't play a single snap. So to me, Le'Veon Bell has come in and kind of taken more of that Daryl Williams role. You're going to need a break every now and then. CEH isn't going to play 100% of snaps. No one is quite, you know, the Christian McCaffrey um, in their backfield, no matter how good you are. So I think CEH is definitely uh, an RB2 this week. You have to temper your expectations with him as always. But with the volume he's getting, with the touchdown upside, he's someone you can roll with confidence. Now, I will say I'd rather start Swift, Dobbins, Akers, or JT but I think CEH is a start as well. Yeah, to put him in the the mid to low end RB2 category as far as this week goes, but he is a guy, and we've talked about it, when he was in a really rough down stretch when Lev Bell initially joined the team those first three weeks, we said, unfortunately, you have to start this guy every single week for the upside that he presents. He's getting some of the highest value touches for any running back in the NFL, and he's going to have those opportunities to punch it in, catch touchdowns through the air, whatever it may be. Let's let's hit on the, the last two guys here, kind of the forgotten names, the underperformers in this class, at least relative to, you know, their ADP around draft day. Keyshawn Vaughn, he actually fits the athletic profile really, really well, just from a measurable standpoint. And he might actually end up getting some playing time this week. Ronald Jones was going to be out anyways with a, a pinky surgery. He has a fractured Pinky in his hand. And now on the COVID list. And now he's on the COVID list. Leonard Fournette was a healthy scratch last week. I think you're a madman if you plug Keyshawn Vaughn into your fantasy lineup in the in the playoffs. But he's an interesting guy to keep an eye on. I think he could be really interesting in 2021. He's a buy low uh, in any dynasty format. Yeah, I agree. Don't plug in Keyshawn Vaughn. Don't get cute. Honestly, now that Rojo's out, people are also going to be saying, oh, plug in Leonard Fournette. He's going to have a huge day. I do think Leonard Fournette will be activated and likely be the lead back in this game because they're still not clinched for the playoffs. They need someone they can trust back there. But I also think you're crazy if you're willing to start Leonard Fournette right now. So stay away from Tampa Bay running backs this week. To me, it's like don't fall into the trap. Could one of them score a touchdown? Yes. I'm not banking on it. I'm not counting on it. And I don't know who it's going to be. So with Rojo likely being out, looks like he's going to be out. I'm staying away from these Bucks running backs. But you're right. I think Fournette will be gone from there next year. McCoy as well. It could be Rojo and Keyshawn Vaughn in a really interesting one-two split, similar to a split that we see in Buffalo with guys like Zach Moss and Devin Singletary, which kind of brings me to Zach Moss. Steph, he's been hit or miss this year. He's had a couple of pop games, but for the most part, he's been disappointing. After he fumbled a couple weeks ago and got benched, he came back last week with 13 carries and a target. In a desperate situation, are you willing to start him this week versus Denver? To me, I think there are better options you could probably stream at the running back position unless you're in a really deep league. Um, but for someone that's getting touches, I think he's probably an RB4 consideration for me or just banking on a touchdown and 10 to 12 points. Yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, I would look at other options. Even De Devin Singletary, I may consider over Zach Moss, just how things yeah, have gone recently. Um, you know, talk about guys like Chase Edmonds, Damian Harris, Todd Gurley, Latavius Murray, you know, some of the deeper names that you'd find in the Zach Moss category. I would put all those guys over Moss. And he's just really, situation-wise, he's being held back. He's going to have to do something crazy from an efficiency standpoint to be able to produce fantasy-wise for your team. So I, I'm not going to plug him in there. His profile, he's a little bit on the slower side. He does have incredible college production that can, can kind of make up for some of that. 
but not a guy that I want to invest too heavily in in Dynasty and certainly not starting right now.